The Last of Us Part 2 is finally going to be released in a week after constant controversy and criticism, but apparently Sony and Naughty Dogs just haven't listened to any of the criticism at all, because my goodness, is there a lot to talk about today. Mainly about how reviews for the game aren't genuine because of how strict they are with what the reviewers can and can't talk about, making it so that they can only rate a portion of the game. I have seen a ton of reviews where the writer literally says in their post that the game isn't perfect, yet they've given the game a 100% score, which is extremely suspicious, so I thought that we could just read through some of the first impressions by reviewers and just talk about how this game has a 96% when clearly people are saying uh, there are a lot of problems with this game. A lot of reviewers have described this game as just incomplete unpolished, and not enjoyable. When I hear a game isn't fun or isn't enjoyable, it doesn't get me excited for it. I do understand that The Last of Us Part 2 is supposed to be very different. It's supposed to be gritty. It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be mysterious. But when a game isn't fun and there isn't that satisfaction in your actions and what you're doing, it doesn't make you want to play the game anymore. But we will read through some of the Metacritic reviews for the game just so you all can see the general the general first impressions by reviewers. So games.cz says The Last of Us Part 2 has no competition among single player survivals in terms of playability, atmosphere, graphics, sound, or storytelling skills. Naughty Dog has once again confirmed that it belongs at the absolute top of the game. We have, uh, we have another one. Screen Rant, 100%. The greatest game of this console's generation? Of that, there is absolutely no doubt. It's also, quite possibly, the greatest video game of all time. Let's look at this one. Gamesover.gr. The Last of Us Part 2 is a true roller coaster of strong feelings that are elicited from some bold story decisions. It goes without saying that it is a marvel to look, listen, and play as it is portraying the most beautifully realized and detailed urban post apocalypse world we have seen in a game to date. Although the story takes some turns that could be helped by some adjustments in their longevity, it nevertheless hits some some truly high notes in their sentimental impact to the player. This reviewer is obviously saying, yes, there are some problems, but they gave it a 100%. Here is a comment that truly wraps up the state that games journalism is in. This one is by Dark Station. It says, There's no easy way to sum up The Last of Us Part 2. It carries all of the flaws of modern video games, but also tries to be so much more than that. It is a beautiful game, graphically and in terms of storytelling, but those qualities are coupled with a ridiculous level of violence and gore. Violence and gore that are the point and potentially overshadow the point. It's it's not perfect, but it's still amazing. It's the most well-crafted third-person game that Naughty Dog has made so far, as well as the longest with impeccable writing, acting, and pacing. Much like the first game and the PlayStation 3, anyone with a PlayStation 4 should seek out The Last of Us Part 2. So they say that it carries all the flaws of a modern video game and that it is also not perfect, but it is still amazing, yet they gave it a 100% score. If it's not perfect, it doesn't warrant a 100% score. A 100% score very rarely happens for video games, let's be honest. Um, a lot of video games don't have perfect flawless scores, but this one just, this one apparently is racking in the 100% sense even when journalists are saying it's not perfect. There is currently only three mixed reviews out of nearly a hundred reviews, so I thought that we could read through them and see what these reviewers truly had to say about it. Game Revolution said this excessive padding and theoretically noble attempt to dive into deeper subjects 
also negatively impacts the gameplay too, as even its ace combat mechanics can't quite stay fresh and exciting when repeated that over the span of 30 hours. I just want to say that we've heard from some reviewers, some honest reviewers, that Sony won't allow them to discuss larger events that happen in the game, and they can only show gameplay from three parts of the game. That's why I have not been looking at YouTube reviews, because they can show very little, uh, very little gameplay, and they can only talk about very little when it comes to the game. They're also not allowed to show or discuss the last 12 hours of the game, which is ridiculous. That's not even fair to consumers who trust the these reviews. I do understand that they've received a lot of negative press and they're trying to they're trying to protect their product and they're trying to get people to uh to buy it day one. But I think that it is very unfair that reviewers are only allowed to base their reviews on like half of the game. I also thought that I would bring up this image that is circulating on Twitter that does have a lot of the keywords that reviewers are using. Unpleasant, not enjoyable, uncomfortable, exhausting, unremarkable gameplay, unnecessarily long, uninteresting new characters, and a grim story. A lot of these words I'm not very interested in. This isn't a way to sell a game, in my opinion, at least to me. It is kind of sounds like the Death Stranding situation, where reviewers were giving it amazing scores, but when the consumers got it, the scores were very different and there was a large discrepancy there, but I think that it's clear that a lot of the reviewers are Last of Us fans, which is fine. Everyone is allowed to have a favorite game or franchise, but to give something such a perfect review when you are using keywords like exhausting and uncomfortable and unpleasant just doesn't sound good, and it doesn't sound like you're being very truthful with your review. But that's all that I had to discuss in this video. Do you think the 100% scores are a bit suspicious, or do you genuinely think that this game will be amazing? Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and share it, and of course if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, and I will talk to you all again in the next video. Really soon.